All right, Justin. Actually, that's what's so special in here. Because they're covering all the domains, so I guess. Can you say your name for us on, on screen? Justin Chapel. All right. Brian, Doctor of Physical Therapy. Those credentials have to be in there. Okay, great. All right. Talk to us about where a child should be at seven to nine months old. Sure. At seven to nine months, um, that kiddo should be sitting up independently, uh, reaching for toys, passing them hand to hand, and they should be able to move from point A to point B. Hopefully that's a crawl. It might not be the prettiest crawl, but they should be able to get from point A to point B. Where should a child be? And you're looking at me the whole time. Yes, ma'am. Where should a child be at seven to nine months? Sure, so a kiddo at seven to nine months should be sitting independently, meaning you're not worried if they're gonna fall over. They should be reaching for toys, passing those toys from hand to hand, uh, and they should be a little bit mobile, so getting from point A to point B. Uh, might not be the best looking crawl, kind of a military crawl, uh, but they should start to gain some independence around that age. What about 10 to 12 months? 10 to 12 months, that's when you better pick everything up off the floor and remove all sharp objects because they should be uh, cruising, transferring between services, uh, surfaces and taking those first few steps independently. All right, great to know. How about, let's, let's even talk about later on. Uh, 36 to 48 months, where, sh where should they be? 36 to 48 months. Well, they're out of the First Steps program because they graduate from First Steps at 36 months. Um, they should uh, look a lot like an adult. So they should be independent with walking on all surfaces. Um, they should be talking in short and full sentences. Um, and they start to look like little people then. Yeah, it's good to know, though, for kids who are in school, too, where they should be That's right. developmentally. All right. And what would you say to encourage other therapists? Why? What, what do you love about your job? Sure. I mean, it's fantastic. I get to play all day, every day. It really doesn't feel um, like work, so I enjoy it a lot. Um, you get that one-on-one -on -one interaction, and you're going to be able to see a kiddo for possibly a long length of time. You might be with that kiddo for one, two, two and a half years, and you really don't get that in other settings. Great. And what would you say to encourage them, though, like if they're interested in a job, sure. why, why first steps? Um, why first steps? Again, it's that early intervention and home-based. Um, there's really not anything else in rehab where you get to go in the home. You build these bonds with the families that are very unique. Um, and it, it's just a great place to either start a career, middle of your career, or end of your career. Um, I think there's something for everybody. And what's the most gratifying part of your job? Sure. Um, I still get goosebumps when uh, kids walk for the first time. So that, for me, is my personal highlight. I love all of the milestones, uh, but most parents want those kids to walk. And then seeing that kid walk, how I feel, how, I parent, how the parent feels, I find that the most gratifying. Yeah, and let's talk about some success stories. Sure. Uh, I mean, luckily, I get successes every day. Um, so I see about 30 kiddos on any given week, and all of them are making gains all the time. So again, maybe they're crawling for the first time, and you know, the, they are able to crawl over to their parent's leg, and you see mom or dad, and their eyes kind of light up. Um, and then going back to taking those first steps, and then they're starting to get into everything. You know, the parents want them to move, but not move too soon, because then they got to baby-proof the house. Right. <laughs> um, let's see, in particular, I do have a kiddo who just took their first steps um, earlier this week, so that was pretty exciting. Uh, mom, dad, grandma, and me were all in the living room working with a kid, like hooting and hollering and cheerleading for them, uh, and they took those first steps, so I love that I get to be a part of that. And not only are you working with parents, though, you're working with service coordinators, too. Correct. Right? Talk to us about them. So it's a fantastic team approach. Um, the service coordinator I kind of look at as um, they're overseeing everything, right? Making sure that services are intact, that, you know, we're coming and meeting the goals of the parents, right? Because I have my own goals uh, as a physical therapist, but the parent goals are just as important. And that's going to be different from household to household. So the service coordinator kind of brings the team together. So we're all on the same page all the time. Yes, and that's important, isn't it? Yes. Um, let's see what else. I guess, I mean, I want to know more about your journey too. What, why did you decide sure. that this was the career for you? Yeah. Um, so when I meet a family for the first time, I always share a little bit about myself because it's odd having strangers in your home. Um, so I usually tell them my initial experience with First Steps was as a parent. So I have a seven-year-old with special needs, 
and he went through physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy in the home. And that's where I fell in love with the program, simply because um, they come to you, right? I don't have to get them in the car and doctor's office and yelling and screaming, but they come in the home. And that's where the kiddo is going to make all of their goals, is in the home, you know, or daycare or grandmother's house. Um, it's really unique to that. So I fell in love as a parent, and I think being able to be on both sides, experiencing it as a parent and now as a therapist, um, m makes me a little bit better at what I do because of it. That, wow, that's powerful right there. <laughs> and uh, what would you say, just like I asked Betsy, what would you say to a parent who feels powerless right now? Yes, um, and I experience that a lot, uh, especially depending on the diagnosis and the pathology that the parent might get home with the kiddo from the NICU and go, okay, now what? You know, the nurses aren't there 24 seven, the doctor isn't checking in all the time. And First Steps is really, we're the first line of defense. We're in the home. Um, so it's a lot about education, um, educating the parent on what to expect, what not to expect. Um, sometimes parents don't feel like they can play with that baby because maybe it's too fragile and we're in there to go, it's okay to play with your child. Uh, but what I really look at is I try and facilitate the parent and make the parent the expert. So by the time I'm out of the home, that parent should be an expert on their child, on their child's diagnosis, their child's strengths and weaknesses, and then I can learn from them, which happens a lot. And you're, you're traveling a lot. Uh, which counties are you serving? I currently serve four counties, so DeKalb, Noble, Steuben, and North Allen. Um, I, would, I would also note I got into it because um, I was seeing kiddos and outpatient who also got first steps and they were on a wait list because there was not a provider up in those areas and I happened to live up there. So I was like, wow, I need to do this. And then I went from one kid to now I have 30 kids, right? Because there's kiddos that need those services and I'm happy to provide them. What makes you most excited about going to work every day? Sure, uh, again, it's that play factor. Um, I'll maybe get some flack from some therapists uh, that I'm friends with that aren't in the first steps world because they don't really think I work. <laughs> Um, and I kind of have to agree with them, you know, so it's a very relaxed environment. Um, the families 99.9% uh, .9 of the time are very supportive. They want me there. They want my information. Um, it's a very stress-free, relaxed job. Um, they get to play all day. Great. What else do you want to add? Hmm. You shared some really great things, by the way. That this is all these interviews just flow so well together naturally, which Good. is awesome. Um, did I miss anything? Um, I was hoping that he could mention his agency at some point, just because um, because we're excited that he's here. And yes, and a part sure. Of that. Uh, and what? Yeah, tell us what, because you may be out of our that you. you may be out of our dis our. You well, sometimes like I go, I'll get kids in Lagrange every oh. now and then, and it's okay. like who's. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. gonna see them or who's but what I um, what I would say to, to, to plug the agency is that a lot of times parents don't know what to do when they graduate from first steps because there is that gap now a lot of kiddos will qualify for developmental preschool um, but schools have an educational model first steps have, has a developmental model so the agency I work for is based out of Fort Wayne but serves several counties outside of that it's called possibilities Northeast and we have an outpatient facility as well um, so we see kiddos in the outpatient. Um, how our facility is unique is that uh, we have access to an, a, a big aquatic pool and warm water therapy. And a lot of kids that aren't so successful on land because it feels like work to them by the time they're three or four years old, we get them in the water to play and it's like they're starting over with therapy. They're excited about it again. Oh wow, that's so neat. Yeah, I like the pool a lot. Cool. Um, sure I asked all the questions. Uh, I can't think of anything else, but if you want to add anything, please do. No, nope, I think I got in the, I do, I do think myself as a parent going through it is, is a unique circumstance. Yes. Um, and also, just like I asked the other parent, do you have pictures of your kids from when they were younger who went through the program? Or no? If you don't, it's okay. Somewhere. Or do you have maybe. pictures working with any of the children who have releases signed? I was going to say, <laughs> so they'd have to sign a photo release. Yes. I do know that. 
Um, what I do um, occasionally is I'll take a video of a kiddo, like maybe I'm into daycare, yeah. mom and dad can't be there and I only get to see mom and dad twice a month or something like that. So I'll take a video of that kid rolling for the first time or doing a new skill that we've been working towards, send it to the parent and then delete it. Got it, okay, no worries. Mm -hmm. You brought some toys. I did. Okay, did. anything else you wanna add? Um, no, I love working for First Steps and I hope to do it for for many, many years. Love it, love it, love it. Well, thank you for driving all the way here. Oh, you have another thing, okay, mm -hmm. great. Um, <laughs> Just look at me. <laughs> yes, so there's not a lot of men in my field. Um, there's not a lot of male therapists that do uh, First Steps and what I think is unique is um, I really help the dads get engaged because sometimes, not to stereotype dads, but you know, they, we're kind of like sit back and watch, you know. And um, I've got several families where the dad's on the floor and you know, handling the kid and positioning the kid, and then mom's hanging back and watching. So it's kind of cool for, for mom because she's seeing dad do some of these things that maybe he hasn't had the chance or felt comfortable doing before. Um, so I think that's another unique perspective of getting the dads involved because they see another dad you know, um, who's been through some of the same stuff that they have. So really it bonds the family in so many ways. Oh yeah, it's, it's, I, feel, I feel very, very close with a lot of the families. What um, do you say to encourage parents? Um, well, I, I focus on the positive, right? I think that's very important. Sometimes when they're going for their neurologist checkup or their orthopedic checkup, they don't focus on the positive as much. It's w these are the deficits they're going to last this long and that. So I focus on the positive. So every little gain that that kiddo has, we're celebrating it, right? And we and if you do it that way, you get to celebrate weekly, right? And not every three to six months.